new videos every day. Life Wisdom. I'm Psyche Truth correspondent Karina Rachel. Thanks for tuning in to The Truth Talks. Today we are talking about stimulants, fatigue, and ability to focus and concentrate on things. Let me know if you are a coffee drinker. Do you depend on coffee or other caffeinated beverages just to get you through the day? I'm talking today with Dr. Vincent Balanzi. He is a practitioner of functional medicine, a doctor of chiropractic, and a clinical nutritionist based here in Austin, Texas. Thank you so much for joining me. I always like to talk with you. So when we're talking about, you know, ability to focus, ability to concentrate, you know, fatigue, is this something that you see commonly in your practice? One of the most common complaints that people have coming in the clinic is fatigue. And I would say secondarily focus and concentration issues. There are people that feel like they can't make it through the day without some type of a stimulant, and it's it's too much. I'm not saying that all stimulants are bad. We're not going to say that caffeine is necessarily dangerous, but if you're so dependent on it that you literally can't get through the day, or if you stop drinking your caffeine and you get headaches that, that you can't even manage, something's wrong. That's mm -hmm. a little bit too much dependence. Right. And you can actually create problems with uh, not having your adrenals work fun or function correctly, of course, sleep problems and and other problems with regenerating tissues. There's a, there's a lot that you can create a problem with. Right. And it certainly seems like we kind of had a snowball effect as well, that once you kind of start depending on these, you know, you caffeinated more beverages, more, yes. you mm -hmm. know, you kind of perpetuate that dependence. Well, and it's, it's really getting to a point where people are getting concerned because we even have college students now and where unfortunately there's a lot of kids on these stimulants so that they can not be ADD. And we can talk about that a little bit, but we've got college kids selling to each other these mm -hmm. stimulants so that they can cram for an exam. And they're using it not because they've necessarily got ADD, but because they can party and then use a stimulant cram and try to get to an exam. And it, it's, it's abuse. Right. And the body's not designed to be pushed that hard. And it, it will respond on its own if you just let it. Right. So when we're talking about the ADD or ADHD medications, mm -hmm. uh, these are the prescribed stimulants, right? right. We're not talking about uh, I'm not talking illegal. About coffee now, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and you know what would be some of the you know certainly the diagnosis of of ADHD in children has just been steadily, steadily, steadily on the rise. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's interesting that you point out that even among college students, and even when people get into their adult years, this dependence, whether it's a dependence on coffee or a dependence on um, a prescribed stimulant medication, I mm -hmm. guess like Adderall, maybe be right, an example. Right, there's a number of them, yes. Um, what is kind of the, you know, overall health implication of, you know, depending on drugs like that, why, why would somebody be concerned or why should somebody be concerned if, you know, about the dependence on those type of stimulants? Well, first of all, there's that, there's the key is that there's a lot of controversy, but it seems that there's a lot of addictive properties to these things and other addictions are, are created. And it, it's a dependence that you don't want to have. The body will, in fact, function if you get things optimally where they should be. So rather than getting dependent on a drug, we're all somewhat ADD. You could label many, many people, maybe everybody with that diagnosis. We're all at sometimes even a little bit hyperactive. So these are subjective diagnoses. They're observed behaviors. Fortunately, there are some new diagnostics. We've got PET scans and other ways to determine brain activity. Maybe someday we'll actually be able to identify people a little more accurately. But if we're all ADD, it doesn't mean we all need a drug or a stimulant, but we get dependent on it because mm -hmm. we don't all live the best lifestyle. We like to stay up late. We like, we don't keep a schedule and the best treatment to not be ADD is to get a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. Yet I find so many people that don't. And many times it's just because of sleep hygiene. They don't keep a good schedule. They don't have a quiet room. 
they, they're on the computer, they're doing something else, mm -hmm. and they don't get to sleep, they don't regenerate their body, and then they have all these problems. So then they depend on a stimulant to keep them going for the rest of the day. Someday you're going to burn out, and it may not be too far from now if you keep doing that. Mm -hmm. And more and more kids are dependent, not only on the prescription drugs, but there's all this going on with the high doses of caffeine, the, the caffeinated gum that, that Wrigley's was going to come out with. Oh, and no. you know, they stop the production because of so much controversy. And I'm not saying caffeine is bad. It can be a performance enhancer. It's got some other benefits. Coffee has some good things in it like antioxidants and bioflavonoids. But again, a dependence is not what you want to have. And the other thing is the stimulants drive you into something that's called sympathetic dominance. You're actually changing how your whole nervous system works and you get to a point where you can't sleep, you can't digest, you can't regenerate, and you're going to be in trouble now. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, I just don't like the idea of being dependent on anything except right. food, water, shelter type oh. thing. But the idea that, that you need it, that you can't live without it, that's scary to me. Right. So, recommendations for people on things that they can do. Of course, we talked about a good night's sleep, a good number quality one, sleep. Number one, yeah. Um, what what I mean, what do you recommend to people who come in and maybe they are hooked on coffee or maybe they're even taking some kind of prescribed stimulant drug? We do a lot of getting people off of those drugs, kids, adults. It, it's it's pretty bad. It's very prevalent. Um, and then not only the prescribed drugs again, but what people are choosing to, to go to the store and buy. So uh, often we'll do a cleanse. And the cleanse is an elimination diet with some supportive nutrients. It's, it's not a, a fast or anything like that. But I do ask them to stop all stimulants, which means they have to stop their coffee or their jolt, or I, I don't want to name too many brands, but you know, there's a lot of products out there mm -hmm. with an excess of these stimulants and people really struggle with that. Mm -hmm. I'm asking them to eat food and take some nutrients and it's a real struggle for most of the, of the time because of headaches and other things that show up. But the cleanse can be very helpful, basically getting them off the stimulants for even a few weeks and suddenly they feel much better. Their body begins to create energy on its own again. And it's, it's not a factor where they're creating problems. Because, again, you need your adrenal glands to function. You need your thyroid to function correctly. And you're, you're going to start interrupting that with these stimulants coming in all the time. Right. So outside of the dependence on stimulants mm -hmm. um, like caffeine or, or whatever it may be, what other kind of lifestyle or, or dietary recommendations can you make for someone to help them improve their concentration, their focus? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people complain, I just can't get anything done or, you know, I'm always, my attention is always going from one place to another. And I think it's interesting that you pointed out, we're pretty much all like that. That's yes. pretty much, we have our, you know, we'll have our times. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like we pretty much all, you know, we have a lot of things on our mind. We can get overwhelmed. Yeah. We can get distracted. Uh, but what other recommendations might you have for, you know, things people can do to kind of work on that ability to focus and concentrate? Well, again, I'll, I got to put sleep number one. You've got to get that under control. See a practitioner if you can't do it yourself. But there's a lot of nutrients that are going to be helpful. There's a lot of very good fats. You've got to stop eating the bad fats. You've got to get away from the trans fats and the altered fats and all the junk that you're eating and let your body clean that out a little bit. But there are certain fats that are very helpful. DHA builds structure. EPA allows the brain to function. You need those essential fats. There's a fat called choline. Uh, there's, a, there's a nutrient that I really like when I'm trying to get somebody off stimulants called glycerophosphocholine. You can buy it over the counter. It's very helpful as a nutrient in itself. But we also know that the B vitamins are going to be helpful in brain function. We know that we need certain minerals, especially chromium and so there's because you have to be able to control the, the energy production and such. Mm -hmm. Alpha-lipoic acid, uh, we need glutathione. So if you're getting your nutrients, then that's going to help your brain to function. And you don't necessarily need to take a whole box. I just named a bunch of stuff. You don't have to right. go buy all that. You can, if you eat real food, get many of those nutrients. Right. So if I'm getting away from the junk food and I'm not getting all the additive chemicals that are going to complicate this and I'm getting those nutrients that I need, I'm going to see my brain function better as well. Right. Again, I, I mentioned the cleanse that we do by the end, by the end of the cleanse, you know, the old 80, 20 rule, 80% of the people are, are pretty much symptom free. They're thinking again, they're happy, they feel good. They're, they're energetic. And all we did was make them eat food. Right. We took away the junk, but, mm -hmm. you know, that's the other part. And, of course, we did a video discussing, you know, what is real food versus right, fake right. food. Um, and I think that video offers a really, you know, a good set of guidelines in terms of, you know, what do we want to avoid? 
Uh, and I think it's great that you point out that, you know, if we're getting a good diet, a lot of these problems that we have, like lots of con lack of concentration, lack of focus, mm -hmm. fatigue, you know, those things will largely be addressed just by eating a cleaner diet right, of right. real foods. And the other thing I would add is physical activity. Mm -hmm. It's going to help some concentration. You actually create more glute. Some of the nutrients I just mentioned, if you're exercising, you make more of them. Mm -hmm. So if you put the whole lifestyle together and you're sleeping, you're physically active, I don't mean a crazy amount, but enough, mm -hmm. and you're eating real food, you probably will find that you don't even need the stimulants. Mm -hmm. What about sugar as a stimulant? Boy, that, that's the worst thing you can use as a stimulant. It's not there as a stimulant. It's there as a fuel. So the body actually does very well on fat byproducts or ketones. If you're going to use carbohydrates, though, you have to keep them under control, just like you would control gasoline. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't use it because you need energy. If your system's working well, yeah, you'll, you'll need some kind of fuel, but there are other things you want to do to have proper function, and then the sugar comes in as a fuel. And you've got to be careful because if you use a highly refined sugar, it's going to be a real shock to the body. Mm -hmm. If I'm eating vegetables and I'm slowly getting this, this source of fuel in, the body never goes into shock. Right. But it, you put down a sticky bun and, and you've got shock for a little <laughs> bit until your body gets the, the levels back corrected. And right. any excess sugar that's out there is going to start damaging you and, and causing more problems. Right. So I'd be real careful considering sugar as something for energy, if that, if that makes sense. You still need it for energy, but it's not really a stimulant. Right. And Even I, though you feel more energetic for a short time till you crash, right? Right. As I know that, especially when I was in college, I mean, there's kind of this constant thing of, you know, oh, you get that lag and you eat some candy, <laughs> you eat some sugar, and then, oh, you're lagging. Yeah, well, you don't want to do that. for Your body won't be able to keep up with that for very long. And I've actually known um, several families who have children and they're complaining about hyperactivity or this, you know, it looks like the child has ADHD and they're kind of going down that path. Um, and then they actually just take, or, you know, maybe not completely take refined sugar 100% out of the diet, but significantly cut down on the amount of the refined sugar that Many child is having. Many studies show that that's going to make a difference and does make a difference. Right. I mean, probably any mother knows that that if you withhold sugar, you'll have a little more manageable child. And mm -hmm. if you give them sugar, it's just like winding them up. Right. I mean, it's something you observe if you have a child. Yeah, certainly, <laughs> so certainly. We don't necessarily need a study. It's right. Like common sense, ho hopefully. Right. And, you know, as much as it really, you know, is common sense, I, I know that there, you know, are people, like I said, even myself when I was in college, who, you know, kind of, you know, you're feeling low energy and you and you have some sugar. And usually it's that refined sugar that comes right. in a candy bar or right. something like that. Um, you know, so, yeah, I think it is important to kind of recognize that, you know, even sugar as one of these stimulants <laughs> that we can become dependent on is really actually going to make our head more cloudy and make Absolutely. those that inability to concentrate and focus yeah. even more pronounced. You'll have a short up and then your body's going to overreact and usually take your sugar too low. And now you're not even able, be able to function. Right. And you get grumpy and you get moody yeah. and, and you're not going to concentrate now. <laughs> right. It's time for a nap. Right. <laughs> so. And maybe that's kind of a good little take home message here that in terms of, you know, uh, being able to focus and being able to function, our body just needs, uh, you know, the, the nutrients that it needs. So yeah, the sleep as, um, something important there, having a good diet mm -hmm. and that when we have a good, you know, optimal diet, pretty clean diet, eating well, most of the time, we should see that all of those little complaints about focus and fatigue and things they like just that. Resolve. Yeah, absolutely. Even oxygen is a nutrient, so mm -hmm. do some deep breathing, deliver some oxygen. Your brain needs that to function, but right. we, we don't think about those things. We want to grab that can or that drink, and mm -hmm. and yeah, you get an effect, but over time, it, it doesn't work as well. Right, and is it you know really something that's healthy for you? Is it no, something that's sustainable? <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for being here You're with welcome. me today. Thank you for joining. Please be sure to click that like button if you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment letting us know if you have problems with focusing or if you are dependent on stimulants like coffee. Be sure to subscribe to the Psyche Truth channel and I look forward to seeing you again next time.